Hey guys, welcome back to Performance on Wheels. We have got another review for you guys today, but not just one, a three-part review on an Acura's hybrid lineup. Right behind us, we have the MDX. We are going to be reviewing the RLX, and then we are going to be reviewing Acura's supercar, the NSX, which is a hybrid. New for 2020, the MDX does get that hybrid. We're gonna go through how that changes the MDX, how it's different, how awesome it is, and just talk about the MDX in general, our opinion about it, things we like. Did you, where do you think this falls in the luxury uh, SUV lineup as far as sales go? As far as sales go? Yeah. Uh, I see a decent amount of them. I'd say maybe... Uh, what do you think sells more? Who sells more? Yeah. As in a luxury SUV? Yeah. Probably Mercedes? No. No one. This what? has always been the best really? selling third row SUV. It has ever since it came out in the early 2000s, it has been the best selling third row SUV. Even more so than that, it's actually the second best selling luxury SUV in general, two or three rows. So, so what's number one? The Lexus RX uh, 350 or 330 or whatever So we should be figuring out why this is better than that. Well, it's got a hybrid now. Well, let's see if that hybrid's worth it. is truly a unique design it is beautiful it definitely adds a layer of elegance in my opinion a lot of that elegance comes from what is kind of now Acura's signature headlight the multiple headlights the prisms the the jewels whatever you wanted to call to describe those that's kind of Acura's new look <laughs> and they look a lot cooler when they're on when they than when they're off in my opinion Another thing that Acura is going to on just about every model is kind of this, this asteroid grill that everything's pointing to the Acura logo, logo in the middle. We have our uh, adaptive cruise, uh, our safety features along with the camera there, guys. Down below, all of this is actually fake with the exception on the driver's side. That is where our air intake is coming in. Some decent cooling from about halfway down above that that's just covered as well so overall the front of the mdx it definitely stands out in that luxury lineup so we are going to continue with this brief overview of the exterior so todd quick showed you the front i'm going to show you the side and the rear we'll do a brief view of the interior and then we are going to get into the nitty-gritty about that hybrid system so on the side of this mdx we have 245.50 with 20 inch rims all around for the wheel and tire package. Right up above that, we have a hybrid sticker. There's only two spots on this entire car where you can tell that it is a hybrid. This blue, take in mind, just remember that there's blue right there. As we move down on the side, it looks pretty standard back here. Nice looking LED taillights, just has your Acura logo, MDX, a nice touch chrome piece. As we come down here, it has very aggressive sort of looking exhaust tips as you can see that i do wish they would move this a little bit so you couldn't see how cheap that kind of looked when you looked in there otherwise it does look nice and as we move up there's that blue i was just talking about that is the second spot to know this is a hybrid super handling all-wheel drive is what that actually stands for all right let's talk storage you have your automatic lift gate and as soon as we get in here, we have a nice trunk with some decent space, a little cubby off to the side here. We can open this up for some extra space. This is where the floor mats are currently for this brand new model that we have here today. And as you can see, this is a three row SUV. By folding the seats down, by just simply pulling this lever and giving them a push, you can see that we do add quite a bit of storage back here. And unlike the Honda Pilot, this vehicle's counterpart we don't have a rope to pull the seat up what we do is just grab that same handle we use to unlock it and just pull it back and then we pull that seat headrest right up thanks austin well done i am a fan of the exterior of the mdx the front primarily is kind of where uh it gets my vote where it stands up from the crowd let's see what the inside's all about right off the bat i want to mention the 
olive ash wood that is throughout the interior. This desert olive ash wood, it's in the center console. It's across the dashboard on the seats. It's even in the back. We'll get to that once we get back there. Before we move on, however, I want to give a shout out to David at Berkeley Acura. This guy is extremely informative. There is his contact info. You can even call his uh, direct line or there's his email address. Guys, if you're in the market for an Acura, if you have any questions about this hybrid system, he is the NSX specialist. Why that matters is that's the same hybrid system that's in the MDX and he knows it through and through. He's got every fact, he can explain it to you in detail on how it works. <laughs> He's a great guy to talk to, he really is. Even if you're not in the Minneapolis area, come into town, go visit David at Berkeley Acura and drive your new car home. Make some memories along the way. Getting back to the interior of the MDX, there, there's, it's really not a secret that it's starting to get dated up front here. All right, this whole two screen design, guys, that's been around since like uh, 2014. Even dating back to 2010 is when they started putting that screen up top with the controls down below. Now the function, the, the functionality of it, I love that. The fact that you can have one thing uh, steady up top, say your navigation and can control everything else but the look of it is what I am uh, referring to as far as getting dated. Other than that, this MDX is truly amazing. When it comes to the seats at six feet tall, 220 pounds, I am extremely comfortable in the front. Everything about the sitting position is great. You just saw on camera where those controls are down by my tush, which is pretty self-explanatory for moving the seats. The steering wheel has a great feel. It's leather wrapped. It feels great in the hands. And the, the center armrest is wrapped in leather. Very comfortable. Let's see what that back seat's like at six feet tall through 20. Now getting in, this is where I wanted to show you. Again, we have that desert ash wood as well as on the center console between the two captain's chairs in the back. We have our, our storage container that is covered in that same ash wood. So sitting back here, guys, we have some climate control. We have heated seats as well as temperature. Right in between the seats, pretty standard for these luxury three-row SUVs. However, what I'm going to say is I got distracted with how comfortable I was showing you everything else that I forgot to even talk about the seat, right? This thing's amazing for a second row seat. This is probably the most comfortable second row SUV seat in that luxury lineup that I've been in. I got in with ease. Now granted, this is pushed back all the way right now. I have the uh, ability to move forward on the slides here, giving that third row passenger more room if need be. Guys, I can even recline it forward and backwards getting it to be a very comfortable sitting position. So check this out. This is the same one touch system that's in that Honda Pilot. However, they put it down here instead of on that shoulder, making it a little easier to access as you're entering. That Honda Pilot's just up top. You can see once I get in the third row and need to get out, there's my button there. I'm gonna climb back here. Let's see what it's all about. <clears throat> <laughs> so that second row again is pushed back all the way. Now I'm going to say the complete opposite of what I said about the second row. This is probably the least comfortable third row seat I have been in as a six foot tall adult. Check it out guys, with that sloping roof line, my head's hitting the ceiling, right? My knees are pressed up against the seat significantly and uh, I'm pretty much at chest level with where my knees are. That's not the intent for this third row, but we like to show you anyway so you get a, uh, a representation of what the size of the cabin is like. Great job going through those three rows of seat to, seats, Todd. Now let's head up to this infotainment and see what's going on with these buttons and storage up here. Once again, there's Dave's card if you guys want to see that. Now, let's check this thing out. 
First of all, huge shout out to Acura for doing this. All of the buttons for the lane keep assist, traction control, all of that, your brake hold, parking brake is all right in that left side. That's where it should be in all cars. Very, very easy to find all of that stuff. A uh, great heated steering wheel button. Very noticeable, very easy to use. All of this is pretty easy, but I'm just, I'm gonna be straight to the point here, guys. I'm feeling really, really dated when it comes to infotainment on this thing. The screens feel out of date. They're not high quality. The in the gauge cluster is not a display and it's not very high quality for the display that's in there. And I'm just, I'm not feeling it guys. I'm going to be honest here. Down here, we have our controls for our heated seats and radio. As you can see here, you can go through the radio and such. Up here, we can put other things like uh, our cameras, for example. Look at, and we do have a 360 degree camera as well as some curb view and stuff like that. But really, it just feels like these cameras should be higher quality. And maybe the cameras are high quality, but the display is just lacking in general. I do really appreciate the interior of this car. Everything is nice, but the two displays need a replacement. Just like the Honda Pilot, the Acura MDX is a front wheel drive vehicle when it does not have all wheel drive. Now, when the hybrid comes into play, we now have electric motors on those rear wheels. There's actually one electric motor per rear wheel. They are independent of each other. If you were to put that into a, a math equation, they are approximately 37 horsepower a, a piece. There's a third electric motor up front. Now guys, these all work together. Everything can work as a system, but those electric motors can also work independently from that combustion motor. This increases your not only efficiency, but it increases your driving performance as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Say you're going around a turn and you're going aggressively around a turn. The outside wheel can put some torque braking on, the inside wheel could increase power, vice versa, whatever the computers are feeling the MDX needs to keep you planted, to not only give you a efficient driving experience, but almost a, a pretty darn good performance oriented one as well. The MDX Hybrid. I've never been a big hybrid guy. I haven't got into that craze. I fully appreciate the technology. I really do. <laughs> I'm just so in tune with the exhaust sound and engine note. The exhaust note, it's awesome. It's, it's like a, a Honda VTAC engine note, guys. It, it sounds really great. It really does. So the hybrid motors in Sport Plus mode it's pretty cool. Let's get into how that technology works. We're able to set the settings in the vehicle to show how the power is being distributed to each of the wheels. So this is a front wheel drive focused and biased platform. As you can see, when we get into the acceleration, that is where the two electric motors are. There's one independent motor on each of those rear wheels. You can see right now that I am coasting those batteries, the, the, the battery for the electric motors is actually being charged. And that'll continue when I get into braking. But when I get back into the accelerator, you can see it's an instant, uh, there's instant torque from those electric motors helping out prior to that uh, combustion motor that's up front. It sounds cool. It's got a great engine note. It really is. It gives a sporty feel to the MDX. All right, so we're coming up to a stop sign, about 40 miles an hour, guys, and we start the coast. Look at those RPMs. They're at zero. I have no motor running right now, and I still have a few hundred feet to get to the stop sign. 
<laughs> just thinking about that without being that intelligent shows you the efficiency that that hybrid system brings to the MDX. There is no crank in the car. There's no turning the key and, and listening to the car turn over. Those electric motors, they just fire and go, right? So there is no cranking that occurs. So when all those stop start features, uh, even in our, our fancy Mercedes, you hear the car crank very briefly. There is no cranking in, in the MDX or the Acura hybrid lineup. This is a great time to talk about how this is the shared uh, platform of the Honda Pilot. We are sitting at a stoplight and it is completely quiet. Now I will start going very slowly. I'm still not under combustion motor with a nice, there we go, 15 miles an hour is when that combustion motor just fired up that time, guys. So I came into that stop sign at 40 miles an hour with the engine off. Even now coasting, my engine just shut off again. I'm just talking you through how I'm observing the hybrid system working. And then when I got going from the stop light, it took until 15 miles per hour with me being very gentle on the gas. I will state that until that combustion motor turned on again. But guys, getting back to the Honda Pilot, the biggest thing I will say about driving difference between the two is this, the MDX feels a little more SUV to me in that Honda Pilot. And we do have a review on the Pilot if you're curious about more information on that. But in that Honda Pilot, that feels more minivan. It feels like I'm driving a minivan opposed to a three row SUV. I have a, a, a more truck-like, a more SUV-like feel from the sitting position, from my visibility in the MDX and the pot Pilot, that is definitely an opinion that I have. Um, other than that, they are two completely separate cars. The interior is uh, a thousand times more luxurious. The ride quality, the seats, uh, it, it's definitely a different vehicle in that regard. I do enjoy how quiet the MDX can be. And I like how you can get a different personality out of the vehicle when you get heavy into that throttle. You get an amazing engine growl. You get, and then when you're not accelerating hard or trying to pass someone, it is just an absolutely peaceful, comfortable ride. Even though this is not specifically a performance vehicle, with the help of those hybrid motors, guys, I gotta mention as well, what else you get with that hybrid motor is a seven speed dual clutch transmission. That's only available when you get that little hybrid sticker on the side. The only real complaint that we can come up with on the MDX is the actual interior dashboard. Not the seats, not the quality of anything, but the infotainment center. Now in that new RDX, which has a more inspired center console that's in that NSX that came out a couple years back. That is what we will assume is going to kind of be the new layout in all of the models. All right, Todd, we just wrapped up our review on the SUV in the hybrid lineup of Acura. What do you think? <laughs> I think everything is on point right where it needs to be with the exception of that infotainment center. Guys, look at this. This is Acura's hybrid lineup. It's awesome that they're bringing this tech to the marketplace. From 320 horsepower to over 370 horsepower to over 500 horsepower with that hybrid assistance. There's some pretty awesome tech coming to Acura. It's here now. Come check out all this inventory and more at Berkeley Acura. Guys, thanks for watching the video. What, what do you want them to do? Well, I want you guys to know what we should do next. Should we hop in this NSX or should we hop in that? Remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.